Hey y'all, this is Charles over here with Homestead BS. Today, we are going to be taking a class out of the homestead um, to work on some knife skills. So we are with Lucindy, who is with Terrapin Cove, and we'll post a link to her website in the uh, description. But she's going to give us a class on some knife skills. Um, Lucindy's trained around the world, and she is a great local chef. She does uh, cl cooking classes here in North Carolina, where I'm at. So be sure to look her up and uh, see what she's got going on, too. Okay, the first thing is that if you want to have fun in the kitchen, you need a good knife. Now, the one that I have, um, I have a global knife, 200 bucks. I've got another knife that's even more expensive. But this is Victorinox, mm -hmm. and you can get it for 50 to $60, and I probably have eight of them for my classes. <laughs> And I've had, these are all at least eight to 10 years old. Gotcha, so they hold up though. Yes, so the key is, if you do not want to cut yourself, you need to make sure that your knife is sharp. Believe it or not, you will cut yourself more on a sharp, not, I mean a dull knife than a sharp one. So, I like this one, it's not that expensive, well it wasn't 15 years ago, but it, um, it will do the serrated, or as my daughter used to call it when she was a child, the segregated knife. Uh, but it will... It's, it's unusual to be able to sharpen the, the serrated knife. Well, it, it, this works. And they've got a new one out, but I haven't saved my nickels and dimes up yet for it. But the key is to just do it smoothly. And you want to start out, first of all... Probably if you've got a real dull knife, you're probably going to have to have it professionally sharpened. But if not, if you would just, after you use your knife a couple of times, just run it three times on both sides so it will keep, it will hone the edge. So I've already done it, so it should be sharp enough. Um, next is, there are two major skills that you need to know. First of all, as for the number of knives you need, I like this one and a paring knife, and then I'm done. Yeah, I got a boning knife. Yeah, I got that. But really, what you need are so just these the, two knives. I don't know, eight inch chef's thing, right? Uh, this no, right? this is a ten inch. Ten inch, okay. But I have about. I used to, and I'm going to tell you why we're using ten inch in a minute. But I think a nine inch probably works better for most folks. I like to be able to move around, and this gives me more mobility. The other thing, I'm so glad you said that, is I remember um, my ex bought me, when I became the chef, this wonderful, expensive knife that was so dang heavy, my arm couldn't do it. This has a Fibrox handle. Victorinox are the guys that make the Swiss Army knives, mm -hmm. so they've been around for a while. Right. Um, and I have used I've, every one of their different types of knives, and they're great. Okay. So I, I don't, you don't hear me recommending things. This is the knife. Well, I'll, I'll find it on Amazon and post a link to it in the, yeah. uh, the video description. Good. But uh, I probably, yes. And most of them have gone and gotten the knife, and I've never heard anybody go, eh, okay. Now, does, I assume they do, but do they make, like, the sets? Like, it's like we always have on the counter, like, the block with the... Yeah, I don't know. Well, you know, I have issues with that, too, because you don't need those knives. Now, it's nice to have a serrated knife. See, ours has uh, the, the one like this, but ours is 8-inch. And then it has almost like a cleaver. That yeah. I, f I find myself using that one quite a bit because the, the rounded top, I find easy for chopping. Yes. Because it just kind of rolls off the counter. I noticed when I was at your house how Ashley was using it a lot. I don't even have one of those. Yeah. So whatever you were, I mean, whatever works for you. I don't, the 8-inch knife to me is not, I, that, I'm not happy with the 8-inch knife. Nine is as short Size as Size matters. I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Yes, it does indeed. So you don't need that many knives. Um, really, the chef knife and the paring knife, nice to have the serrated knife. But, and also, really, I know there are lots of cuts, the Brunois and all these other different cuts. But really, there are just two that you need to know that I use 90% of the time. So the first one is just the basic slice. Now, here's what I learned in the restaurant business is if you cut yourself, everything stops completely. And when you've got 20 tickets, you can't stop. So the first rule is do not cut yourself. Okay. Period. And so that means we don't want to, you know, do something like this and start cutting. If you get nervous, keep your fingers away until you become more proficient. But if you get nervous, just stop. And I'll show you what you do when you get nervous and you have to stop. That's when the alcohol comes out, right? That's it. <laughs> Single malt scotch all the way. Okay, so let's just put the knife in our hands. Now, the other rule is don't cut yourself. Uh, how do you do that is don't lift this knife off the cutting board. When you lift it off, something can go underneath it and get chopped off. But just watch for a second. You see how I'm drawing back. The tip's still down there. Slide forward, slide forward. The cut is on the slide. Okay, note you're sawing. Have you ever been on an elliptical? Many moons ago. Okay, so I want you to think elliptical. So we're going to slide forward, draw back. Slide forward, draw back. And we're doing it exaggerated right now, but there's a reason. Okay, until you get comfortable. And then I just want to show you just, you keep doing that, and do you see how, now obviously I take into consideration how big this is, okay, now you slid forward. Right, as you said, oh, slide yeah, that's forward, right. you're draw a mirror, back. You're a mirror image to me, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, so, but once you, for example, this carrot is going to be different than this, they're different heights. So, the idea is I'm drawing back, and if I hear, then I know I'm not sliding anymore. That reminds me of one other reason why you might want to cut your knife, uh, cut the, using this approach that I'm showing you, is when I prep, I prep for four, six hours a day when I'm in serious business longer. Mm -hmm. What is happening to my arm at that point? Yes, yes, and then the tennis elbow gets in there. So um, what you want to do is this. I can Very do this impact. all day, right? So because I'm dealing with the celery, I don't have to draw back as far. But when you're starting out, go ahead and draw back and slide. Hear that clunk? That's because mm -hmm. I didn't slide and slide it all the way, make sure it's flat on there and slide it forward. So draw back, don't cut through it on the draw back, draw back on the slide forward. Draw back on the slide forward. Okay, just let me, let me control your hand, yep. uh, if you don't mind. Okay, you gotta hold on to the celery. Okay, so we're drawing back, sliding forward. Draw back, you feel it now? I think so. And speed comes with time. I've been doing this for a while. Okay, did you see how you were cutting come on the comeback? We're going to draw it back above, slide forward. Relax your arm. There you go. Perfect. So draw back and then... And get on the celery. Slide forward. Draw back. Slide. Perfect. Just keep doing it till you feel comfortable. And sure enough, you know, when you get home, you'll probably slice it going back towards you. And it just takes a while. 
Okay, let's stop for a second. See how those are still connected? You want to make sure that you... Again, you don't have to press too hard, but you just want to make sure... Look at you. Look at you, look mister. At me go. That's it. Okay, it didn't go all the way down. But you notice this tip is never coming up. And we're going to talk about how you want to hold your fingers next. And also, if you don't want two hip replacements like me, you want to be flexible and move your hips and just, you know, I, I, you're working with a knife. It's sort of tense there for a minute, but, but it's as long as you keep the point down. Now, as for your fingers, I want you to really watch this. Because I've got my knuckle here and these two fingers behind it, look at me looking at you. I'm looking at you in the eyes and nothing can happen. Why? Because I didn't pick up the knife. The I didn't pick up the knife. There you go. Draw back, slide forward. See, yeah, no, what, It's hard to get used to sliding the celery that way. People always ask me, do you move the celery or do you move your hand? And I go, I don't know. Okay, but you're lifting this up. I want you to keep this down. Keep going. Well, let's, let's, here, take this one. There you want my little tiny celery no more? I'll, I'll deal with your little tiny cell. Okay, you want these two fingers back. This one with just this knuckle straight up and down. Okay, scoot it back so you have somewhere to go. Okay, there you go. Now all the way down, all the way down, all, and you don't have to draw back quite so far. The, okay, yeah, I want you to just do draw back like that far, because we, we you got it now, so you don't have to do the exaggeration thing. There you go. Draw back. You got to remember to come back and draw back. Okay, now let's say you're here and you're going, I'm scared. I don't want to cut myself. Well, don't cut yourself. Um, but let's get to a little bit closer to the end. Do you see how once you get used to it, you don't have to do that? Yeah. Because I know I'm going to always do it right. So you, you just judge it according to how big anything is. Well, I don't have to lift it more than this. The only thing I have to remember is keep this down and slide forward and make sure I'm flat on the slide forward. All the way down. There you go. Perfect. But you just play with it. And the more you do it, the more proficient you get. So now I'm scared. I'm scared on this one. So what I do on this one is, and this is the second. So you've learned the first one. That's the hardest. This is the second one. Okay, question. If I do this, the chances of my cutting myself are a little bit higher than if I do this, right? Yeah. Okay. So, also, remember six to eight hours prepping? I need to make, take advantage of every bit of weight I can put on it. Doing this, see I run it right across here. Doing this, I've got extra weight, so this arm doesn't have to work quite as hard. So all I'm going to do, again, does the knife come off the table? No, the knife stays on the table. There we go. So let's take some of our droppings here. Do you see how I'm doing it? And my hips are moving because I don't want, well, I've already had two hip replacements, but... You can save yourself. That, where's that thumb? That thumb's going to get cut off. Okay. There we go. See, I'm used to trying to see what I'm chopping. Yeah. Well, you can put your hand down a little bit farther if you want to. But, I mean, what's there to see? You're chopping, right? I know. To see all this stuff stuck, stuck into the side. Okay. I don't get chopped. Let me show you one other thing. There's only one time 
in the how many years, 12, 13 years I've been teaching, that I ever screamed. And it was when a student did this. I always did it from the back. Yeah, yeah. You know why? Because that's what you're supposed to do. But, so, yes, you clean, and then you, and notice my fingers are up, wipe. Clean, chop, scoop it together. I think I need like an 18 inch one. My hand <laughs> feels like it covers too much of the knife. Well, no, it, but, it, no, 18, 10 is to me the tops. I know Mike bought me a 12 inch one top and it was that one that was too heavy. That was the one, okay. So, but you, the, the key for you and your viewers to know is that if you're doing this, and make sure your thumb's here, you cannot cut yourself. The second you lift this knife up and put this hand here, danger, danger. Okay. So, you know, if you're at home practice, ooh, gosh, I never cut that one. Okay, if you're practicing, get a carrot, cut it in half. You want to start with the really narrow ones. And if you want to, we can go ahead and uh, ditch our celery mash. Yeah, we can put it in that bowl. So just scrape it in the bowl, and what I do is just pick this up from the right, better side, and just scrape it. And you're um, thinking, well, if I'm scraping, I'm rolling my knife. Well, if you're sharpening your knife often, you don't have to worry about dulling your knife. Okay? So let's do it now with the carrot. I'll give you that one. Um, so... Look at your fingers. There we go. And you can put them way down here. There's no, I mean, unless you're just trying to prove a point, there's no point in doing it. Oh, here, I'll give you this one. Here, start this. There. there we go. That, that's going to take a while to get used to. Well, no, well, you're pressing to too hard. Like I can see your knuckles are turning white. But you're just doing, look, look at my fingernail. My knuckle's not there. My fingernail's here. But I know that I've got this straight up and down. Something like that. Right. So you barely have to lift it up, don't you? You've got to cut through. So I lift mine a little bit higher than necessary just to make sure I'm not sawing. Lift. So there we go. Is it getting easier for you? Do you mm -hmm. feel... Do you feel... The, the, hand, the, the left hand is the one that's... Uh... Oh, well, just hold it like this. You don't need to hold it. That was oh, just okay. to show you. Yeah, you just hold it. H however you like to hold it is great. Okay, I want you to let me have complete control. Okay. Well, you got to actually press down. <laughs> <laughs> you said you want to complete control. Yes. I just want you to feel what's going on here. So more of a downward motion than yes. I was doing. Yeah, you, you're sliding, but you're still sliding forward as you go down. That's it. That's it. That's perfect. But the main thing is, I have people go... <gasps> Trust me, when Melissa, Melinda Willis taught me how to slice a mushroom 40 years ago, she was just, <laughs> but she said, do it slowly and speed will come. And you notice, see my finger, now I'm just using my finger now because I'm watching. So tell me, 
Do you have any questions? I don't think so. I think I asked anything I had as we went. Okay, good. Now we're going to talk French. <laughs> we're going to talk Batonet, Alumet, and Julian. Though Julian and Alumet are both the same. A batonet is a stick. It stands a French for stick. Like a French fry. Yeah. What we want is to do is create some sticks. Is it create is some sticks. Stick. It is a half and the inch alumet stick. And the, and the alumet and the julienne uh, well, are, uh, well, it depends on what you read. They can be one quarter. Sometimes the julienne is one sixteenth. Who needs a ruler? Just, you're eyeballing it. So the way to do it, and we're going to do it with the tricky part first. This is going to be your tricky part. Don't do anything yet. <clears throat> so I'm going to cut off the stem. And by the way, I am really big into saving stuff for my... Have you talked to your group about chicken stock? No. Okay. So... You're cutting up your celery and you've got that big stalk. What is the the bulb? Oh, we regrow all the. Okay. Well, let's say you're but the, not. But the root ball at the bottom. <laughs> yes. So what I do is I cut that off and I put it in here. What am I going to do with this end pieces of the carrot? Throw it in here. What am I going to do with the onion peel? Onion peels? What is the? You don't use peppers, right? I know some people use peppers in that. Yeah, well, you could. It depends on what you want your stock to look like. But let's say the onion peel, you throw that into, you know, stuff that you would normally put in your compost or that you would throw in the garbage can. You put it in a bowl, then you put it in a Ziploc, then you freeze it. Mm -hmm. And when you get ready to make chicken stock, you just throw it in there frozen. I throw it in there frozen with a little oil and I let it sort of brown a little bit, release its flavors, and then you've got free chicken stock ingredients. So, yes. Okay, the only danger is right now because... Because it's round and rolls. Yes. So, I'm anchoring my hand, and yes, it's I'm really pressing down, and my fingernails are right in there. So, I'm trying to stop it from rolling, if you can sort of see that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm going to cut, and you're going to have waste, but remember, mm -hmm. so we're going to press down and sliding forward. It's always the slide forward. <sighs> now I've got it. So we're, now we're creating a square. Sometimes mine looks like a trope, trope, trapezoid. I don't know. But we're going, aiming for a square. You'll never see math equations or math things <laughs> on this channel, that's for sure. Okay, so <laughs> so again, I'm sliding forward, and I'm notice how I'm putting my full weight of my body on there. And then I'm going to do it again. Slot tip never comes up. There is my square. Okay, so uh, you're going to cut off the end, cut off the end. It, and I'm using this in my stock. Okay, yeah. I, no, you need to get a thumb underneath I have this. One. Okay, good deal. And so, I want to go forward with the cut, right? Right, and I'm so glad you did that because it, that's fine for right now, but yeah, go ahead and do that. You are probably going to have to trim it again because remember, you need to think square. Oh, good. You just keep doing it that way. This is good. This is really good. So you're still working on the flat side. Oops, and what you tricky. will what you will learn after you cut this next part is that my square is rounded. <laughs> no. Well, what happens is uh, you've got, and it's not going to be perfect. You know what I'm saying? But uh, you've got this little rounded part. So when you cut the first time, cut farther in. 
because it's instinct for us not to, gosh, it's such waste. Right. So, but the way I, I feel, deal with the guilt is I'm making stock, so right. it's all okay. I feed all the pigs, so yeah, I, well, I there understand. You go. I almost lifted up my knife. Did you see that? You didn't catch me. I did not. See, the tip's got to be down because you tip it and then everything starts rocking. This is a fulcrum or whatever. Yep, more math. <laughs> and then I've got, oh, I think I'm on a trapezoid there or something. Rhombus, something like that. Okay, but I can trim that up. Now, you may be thinking, I'm not in France. Why do I need to know these? Well, because there are so many cute things you can do with this. My daughter will love this part. Oh. Okay. So, let's just say that you're roasting vegetables. And you've got your potatoes and your onions and you're going to put your carrots. What if you did these carrots? Somebody's going to go, Charles. How did you learn how to grow square carrots? Rectangular carrots. They will be so impressed. Okay. So that's one way you can do it. Um, and again, I'm more about, um, the flavor is everything. I get that. But also presentation and aesthetics. Sorry. Especially if you're taking photographs. It's important. So that's why I like to use lots of color. And if there's a way of, you know, for example, when I'm making a salad, I may use, um, let's say use romaine. And I've got my romaine in there. But then I'll take my spinach and do spinach chiffonade, which I can show you that knife cut in a minute. Um, and so it mixes it up. And it's, you've got dark green, light green, and it looks so pretty. So let's say you're making a consomme. I don't even know what a consomme is. It's a soup. Ah, okay. okay. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to do, create the allumet. Remember, this is one size. The allumet or the julienne is smaller. So let's say... So you quarter it. You could do it how... Well, it really depends on how big your carrot is to begin with. Oh, uh, okay. And what you need. Okay, but let's say I've got this clear consomme, a clear broth is what a consomme is. Sorry, I don't know if I answered that. But I want it to be cute. Okay, so. Look at those little cute things. In fact, see, I don't know that I would notice the carrots were square in my soup. But if that if it's a clear consomme, yeah, I get that. But if it's a clear consomme, that and uh, chopped green onions, tiny, tiny sliced green onions, they're floating on top. So, yeah. yes, they will notice. Here you can, for a salad, for a salad topping, I might use something a little bit larger like this one right here. Okay, so let's, you've got your bag. And again, when you're like doing... Um, Roasted vegetables. It doesn't have to be exact. Sometimes right. you really do want it more exact. Okay, so are we ready? I think so. I'm going to turn mine into the julian, right? Right. So you're going to... So uh, oh, where's that thumb? What is that thumb doing? Everything. Okay, yes. There we go. Sliding right. forwards. To, came up. Heard that chop. Okay. Now turn this over and do the same thing. Sliding forward. Perfect. Okay. So now you've got um, rectangles, but it's okay. Yep. You can, again, for somebody coming over for beer and dip, you know, it doesn't matter. But yeah, I would probably cut this one more like that. These are nice. Yeah, cut that one. And so you're good. There you go. Perfect. So these are, I would call these alumets. I would cut this one one more time to make it a julienne. But you don't need a julienne. So this is for dip. Uh, but the alumet is also for dip. It's just a little bit thicker. Um, okay. 
So we've discussed the Batonet, the Allumette, and the Julian cut. The other cut I wanted to show you, while we're talking about salads, so remember we talked about uh, how I was going to use romaine, just slice it, you know, bigger slices. But then, I wish I had some spinach. It will do better with spinach. But... Is that kale? Yeah. Um, you know what? Give me one second. We'll use the spring lettuce because it'll stack better. Let's say you, we're going to pretend this is basil or it, you can pretend it's spinach. And what I'm doing is stacking the leaves on top of each other. And then I'm rolling. For those of you that have rolled your own, and I ain't saying, I ain't asking what kind of rolling you did, but we're trying to roll it like that. So why don't you grab some and do it. You don't want a huge amount. But then if you want to watch the follow-up, what I'm going to do is, you know, there's cutting at the diagonal. And even though we're not worried about math, we do need to know what the diagonal is. But it's more extreme. Diagonal, more, ex more, more diagonal. Okay. And then super, 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 super. Look how thin. Super thin. Way, way thin. You gotta be careful with your fingers. And then you know what you got, Charles? You got a party. You got confetti, buddy. So Woo! many little tiny pieces. Yes. So let's say you're making crostini, which is a piece of bread toasted, and you're gonna put some stuff on top of it. And then you've got this fresh basil from your garden. Basil confetti. Right, but also let's say you got this salad. Now you don't have to cut it quite this thin for the salad, but think how attractive it would look when you've got this. You've got we we'll pretend that's lettuce, and then you mix that in with it. Look how attractive that is, and you're getting different flavors too. Okay, remember how we talked about extreme angle? That's just straight up, and that's a not. Do we call that? A, no, 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 not even close. We need to start over on this one, buddy. <laughs> there we go. So grab some more. And do it. You had it rolled perfectly. Okay, you want to roll it as tight as you can. And then, let's look at the angle that you're going to do it at. Extreme angle. So like that. Okay. Okay. And you're making confetti. Teeny tiny, teeny 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 perfect, perfect, perfect. Just don't cut your little fingers. teeny 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 Okay, good. Very nice. But it really does make a difference in the look, and especially since you're growing different lettuces in your garden. Mm -hmm. Think of them as each separate. It's like when I do my panzanella. I will do some teeny tiny of uh, the sun golds, which is my favorite, cut those in half. But a larger tomato, I'll do some in wedges, some in cubes, different colors and different and um, it, it makes a difference. It won Best Dish in North Carolina. Just oh, saying. man. Okay. All right, so not bragging, just facts. All right, so now we're going to, tr okay, you've got, let's say, a sugar snap or a snow pea. Same thing. Just gives you a little crunch. Right. So try that. Extreme, extreme. No, that's not extreme. There we go. Also, um, the... Got to go all the way down. There we go. See, this is the clue 
that you need to go. I mean, th this I, I wasn't being funny. This is right. how you learn. You go, okay, well, obviously they're stuck together, so I'm doing something great. Well, I'm not doing something great. No, no, no. <laughs> yes, you are doing something. Look how pretty. No, seriously. Look how pretty that is. And you've got this little bit of crunch. Right. There you go. You corrected yourself. That's my favorite. Perfect. But remember, the main thing is not to cut our fingers. That's all that matters. Because everything stops and we can't stop. A farmer's life never ends. It goes on and on and on. Okay. Okay, so so we did the chiffonade. Um, let's do the shallot and the dice. Everybody does it differently. If somebody says, I don't do mine that way, you go, good for you. But when I'm mincing, so I'll go, Lucindy said. Yeah, that always works. Um, so I'm slicing it this way. See how I did my fingers here? So I'm not going to cut my... I'm always... That's all I'm concerned about. So I'm going to put my fingernails right in there. And I'm going to do it real thin. And then you can stack your stuff. We'll do a, If I've got an onion, we'll do it in a minute. Okay, it's something else to remember. The thinner you cut this, the less you're going to have to do this. Because I can get it minced first go around. If it's not minced enough, you know, I've got a couple of little long pieces, then what do I do? And chop it up some more. So why don't you... And it's going to fall apart, and it's, it's all good. So I want to cut it in the thin. Yeah, you're going to, yeah, that way, as thin as you can, and then you're going to sort of lay them all together. We are in luck. I have an onion, because there's one other cut I want to show you that's very important. All the way down. And again, it's getting scary, so stop and just do your... <laughs> you ain't scared of nothing, are you? Buddy? Oh, yeah. No, Charles ain't scared of nothing. He's dealt with angry turkeys. He can do it all. I was dealing with angry pigs this morning. They were angry? I thought they were real sweet. Oh, yeah. Unless they think you have food and you don't. <coughs> Uh oh. And that was the case this morning. I was just going to get them, let them out of their pen <coughs> so they can get down into the garden. They want food brought to their bed. Right. Oh, yeah. They don't want to walk that 100 feet to get from the pig pen <laughs> no, to the garden. No, you're asking too much. So that's it. No, okay. No, no, no. I want you to do it this way. You're not going to, you don't want to move. Don't move the knife. Move yeah. the hand. So that way you've got like more, you've pan. got a control. There you go. And then just flip it, scrape it off. Scrape the other side since you got it all there. Okay. Now let's talk about the onion. Again, I've had students say, you're wasting. No, I'm not wasting because of my stock. stock. So I'm going to peel this onion. You get that one. Oh, sorry. Um, and I'm going to cut off, cut it down the middle, cut off the tops and bottom, and peel. So we're not going to put the piece of peel in the uh, stock with the sticker on top. You know what? I put it in there all the time. <laughs> because you know what? I'm going to strain it. So what does it matter? I would think you'd boil off the glue on it. What's a little glue between some <laughs> Oh, that reminds me of my favorite word. People go, well, shouldn't you peel those carrots? Well, it depends on the dish, and I do peel carrots now, but what I used to go, I go, 
No, because I'm being rustic. <laughs> so rustic means lazy. Lazy and rustic. You, that, that's my fallback. Okay, so now this one you got to really think about. And I, you need to be careful. Okay, so when you're making stir fry, you want wedges. When you're doing salads, oh, wedge is a good one. When you're doing salads with tomatoes or onions or whatever, a wedge is a nice cut. Do you remember this cut? Mm -hmm. You're going to use that. That's, that's it. This is the one you want to perfect. Okay, now I'm aiming towards the center. Got my fingernail in there. I got my hand out of the way, so in case I decide to go, I don't slice myself. Let's say I want a real thin one for salads. Notice how the angle of the knife is slowly going up. Okay, so then I've got, and then you separate them all out. Nice, pretty. Okay, then I'm gonna do a stir fry. Ooh, we need to keep these separately for a reason. I forgot about something. Okay, so for the stir fry or for my roasted vegetables. You want those big chunks? Yeah. Or maybe even bigger than this. I don't know. But you want to separate each one of them. Now, sometimes, and uh, students ask me, well, you know, okay, that's not bad. Shouldn't we use this? If it doesn't look delicious, no. Charles has pigs that will take it. Just bring them to Charles and he'll eat it. Uh, not Charles, but the same thing with uh, like this right here. What am I going to do with that? Well, what I might do is usually I'm preparing a whole menu. I'll just... Mix it up or something. Yeah, online. yeah. And, and I could throw that in the stir fry, but I need to do something with it. Because I don't want... Always, and that reminds me of something else, always think about the person you're cooking for. So, I don't know how you feel about lettuce, but when I get this huge, and I got to cut it, I don't want it. So, when I cut up my lettuce, I'm thinking of that. I'm making sure that they can put a little fork in there and they get a nice little bite. And they don't have to fight the lettuce and it's sticking out of your mouth and all that stuff. So the same thing with whether you're going to do big wedges or thin wedges. Think about what are we eating here. Same thing with another kind of salad. You know, you want everything, or roasted vegetables, everything about the same size so that it cooks more evenly and it looks more appealing. Okay, so go for it. All right, see so you come in. You do the real thin first. Ang angle towards the center. Watch the angle of your knife as it goes up each time. Uh, keep straightening out a little bit more each time. Perfect. Wow, those are thinner than mine. Okay, now you thin, need right? to go up straight. Oh, yeah. There you go. It's awkward because you're really having to lift that knife up, aren't you? Okay, now stop and flip it. Flip it. Okay, and now you're going to do a bigger angle. So do three out of that one. So you're going to do, but it's the same cut. You have to be careful. There you go. That's it. And then you separate them out. And then, you know, this has got that thing. We Anything that doesn't look appetizing, throw it away. I mean, put it in your pig bucket. So let's review what we've covered. What did we learn? Not to lift the tip of the knife. Good. Anything else? Don't saw. Don't cut, saw. Cut on the push, not on the pull. Oh, good. Well, I might have to. That may be a t-shirt. 
Okay, and uh, let's see. Basically, you really just need two knives, or we'll say three with the serrated, or segregated, however you're pronouncing it now. What are the two knives you need? The 10 inch. Or, or nine, I'm really about this, I've changed, I think I'm happy with the nine inch now. And the paring knife. And the paring knife, right. And then we, let's see, what was the first cut was the slice. The second the, one was the chop. And the julienne. Then the julian. No, the julian was the, the what was the, the bigger one of the julian? Batonet. Batonet. Uh, baton. Yeah. Baton. And then the allumet. Which is the smaller version. Uh, yes. And then the julian, which is supposedly a little bit smaller than the allumet. We also learned dice because I didn't call it dice, but when you're doing this, that's dicing, and you can do, you'll look at recipes and they'll say big dice, small dice, right? But this is the chop, we did that. We did the wedge cut, well, which was, you know, basically. But we did the chiffon up. Tiny, 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 tiny. There you go. You know, almost everything I like onions big, but nobody else in my house eats onions, so oh, yeah. I either have to cook them until they're gone or leave them big so they can pick them out. There you go. So if I try to cut some onions tiny like this at my house, it would not go over well. Okay. But then, go ahead and show me how you will mince it. Mince is smaller than chop. So that's when you keep your hand. Yeah. By the way, do you see how your cutting board slid a little bit? Yes. Okay, what do you do in that case? We have a silicone mat we put under ours. Well, aren't you fancy? Well, it's the one we use for the cookies. Okay, it's the lift same it, size. Lift it up. You take a damp towel. So, for those of us that don't have the fancy schmancy, it works I'm but it really well. That's another really good way to cut yourself is by having a, a cutting board that slides around. Slide. There you go. Right? I don't like doing that way. What? I don't like doing that way. Uh, and you know what? You can do it however you want to. That's the nice thing. All I can do is show you one way. The other thing, if you've got, if your viewers are doing this, this is not good. This That's the way I always do it. I always have my finger up top because well, it, yeah, it makes it easier for me to control the knife. Yeah, well, you think. But when I was um, in France, no, Spain, and got to take work with the Michelin star chef, he just went, are you kidding me, woman? Yeah, no, no, you have more control. If you don't have, then you're, you've got a weak wrist. But, but this is also putting a lot of strain here. Um, I've always been sort of, it took me a long time. I'm sort of tense and I grip everything. You've got to remember, you can't go for the long term. You can't go the eight hours hope like this. You're going to have problems. So, if you want to do it that way, Charles, you just go right ahead. I'll try. But, but, no, no, no. Like, there's no thumb. There's nothing on top. There we go. It feels so weird. Yes. But just, will you just consider trying it? Yes. Because this, this, and I really like this chef. He was great. And, and I believe every word he said. There you go. Just need to relax that shoulder. The shoulder's up. I want you to drop your shoulder. You just have to keep telling yourself to relax. Move your hips a little bit. Just try to drop your shoulders. Deep, deep cleansing breath. Release. Perfect. And thus.
ends the lesson. All right. Well, thank you. It's been my pleasure. I greatly appreciate it.